It's like when drink. you say focus. Yeah, the focus. Not, yeah. <laughs> fuck yous. Fuck yous. Yes, that, that was a member of Victoria. Mm -hmm. Fuck yous. You need to fuck yous. I was like, this is the best pronunciation <laughs> of that word I've ever heard in my life. Remember emotion sickness? Emotion sickness. Oh, it was so good. What was the... I have uh, emotion sickness. I, 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 this is one of the best ever. <laughs> I, I told you I'll steal that one because that, that has yeah, this that is the cute. best one ever. I have emotion sickness. I it's <laughs> awesome. That's all I can say. All right, what are we doing this week? So this week uh, we the want to, we'll do the low west stuff. Yeah. But I think we wanted to get into an example of well, why we exactly why teach the way we teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Why why, uh, why we set up? Why do we? Fix. Well, what is the way that we teach? All right. So first of all, it, uh, it has to come. And I think that's something that has to be explained because we see that sometimes on the groups and even through the mentoring program. My goal is to find how the shit works. Why? So we can achieve greatness. Mm -hmm. Right. So I might fail, but I am aiming to be great. At Right. So uh, again, maybe you call it arrogant. I, I don't know why you would put your energy into something and not try to be great at it. Even if... You, I mean, like you might not succeed that, but that's my entire point is that to be great, you need to go at things with that attitude, knowing that those particular ones won't turn out because at, you might find greatness. You will find greatness in the least likely place. Yeah. It's not even you might. It's your, like, so everything that I do is based on trying to understand the system the best so that I can give myself chances of being the most successful possible. Right. And I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. But that means that if you come at me going like, yeah, no, I'm cool. I'm like, good. They don't come ask me. Yeah. I am the last guy on earth that you want to approach and say, I'm just trying to be average. Well, that's, Can you just give me just plain enough? It reminds me, there's a, there's a phrase I heard from an episode of Rick and Morty, actually. But he mm -hmm. used the term because someone was trying to call him out for being too crazy. And he's like, I don't need some agent of averageness yes. coming in here. And, yeah. and that's my thing, too. It's, it's like, I have no desire to be an agent of no, averageness. No, but look, okay, it. so I'm going to a world champion barista, mm -hmm. right? And I go, can you please make me the blendest coffee possible? I don't want it too strong of a taste, like, because you're really good at making coffee. Good, so make me average. Yeah. Right? Because I don't want too strong of a taste. I don't want it. To, I just want it blend. Yeah. So can you apply all your skill, your talent, and give me something really bland, please? What do you think he would say? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's exactly. Not, right? not what, or, or, what, or what he may say politely would be, that's not what I do. Starbucks is two yeah, blocks over exactly. there. Yeah, right. So what if you want, like, you're like, I'm fine with the way I just want 1% more, then you do not need me. Yeah. Right, I am the wrong guy. This is not 1%. By the way, to get 1%, uh, you don't need anybody. You just do work and then you'll get your 1%. Yeah. Now, there are consequences to that as well, which means you're never going to go anywhere. But right, so that's how Strong Fit is designed. The, the key to me is to figure out the shit. Yeah. Right. And we have, it's, it's interesting too, where you're working with coaches, often what we see is coaches that kind of get to. Usually when they start looking for new things, different yep. things, it means that they are at that point where they're trying to seek something different, right? right? Yes. However, often they stop there and they don't yep. run any further into, or, or, they, or, they, or they just find a spot where it's like, I don't know what I am, what I want to do, how I need to do it. I don't just don't know. And they kind of just freeze up. Yeah. And so, but they look at me, it's... People look for me for the, always the same reason. They say you have an unconventional mind. Yeah. I've heard that many times and they do that, they know like that. The guy who wrote the paper with Friston. Yes. Literally, that was one of the stuff he His said. It, it, yeah. It, it was like, you have an unconventional mind. I was like, I've been told that before. <laughs> uh, right. But so you come to me because I have an unconventional mind. And then you think you're going to get toward that by following my system. Yeah. Do you understand that by definition, this is an oxymoron? Is it working? Because you working. keep looking at it. I'm just keeping an eye on it. Okay, so there we go. Good. By definition, it's an oxymoron. Like, you can't get to inconventional thinking by following a system. Yeah. That's the fucking point. And this reminds me of an example we had talked about earlier. Is I, you know, I worked as a technician for a lot of years. And yep. it was, so it was a lot of diagnostics was mm -hmm. the thing. There is a thing that is supposed to be working and it is not. And there's very, it's not like it was one thing that I worked on. Meaning, you needed... A universal approach, kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. to the way you handled just problem solving. It can't just be 
gas for that's a scientific, scientific approach not a yeah, yeah. not a scientific a but, universal one yeah so yeah. so what i what but what i went for was what what i did was i went in and each situation was its own situation exactly and and i had trouble with older technicians who knew too much and younger technicians who knew too little because they would come in and they would want to be smarter than the situation right mm -hmm. away so they would walk yep. in and go well it sounds like it could be either this this or this and i'm going to say well, we should just start looking at things as this process goes. Because if you come in, and I could do that too. I could walk in yeah. and say, it's probably this or this. And it would be 90% of the time. But that extra 10% where it's not that, if you take that approach, it will fuck you over for days. Yeah. You will, you will yep. miss things. You will That's fix you the wrong mistakes. things. Yep. And, you make, and those types of mistakes are big and they're expensive. Yep. Not near as costly as being a little more careful when you're right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but it was funny because, but my boss is a very smart guy, very business and numbers oriented guy then. And, and he always said, we wanted to start to come up with a, a process, S a system. Yeah. And, and the reason we always said this is, this is why we introduce these systems in our business, is we can't get a person who doesn't have my experience to perform as effectively as I perform. Right. Yeah. And so what we, but, reality but, of yeah, life. but what we did was in trying to do this, you would come up with these checklists right so yep. we come in and you check this first and this first and this first and this first and that is kind of how i work like that's the order with which i kind of looked at things but that's not what but you're that's doing. not what i was doing yeah and as soon as i start you start checking these boxes these guys don't think either which meant they never learned anything exactly. and i yeah i was you end up trying to build all of a sudden this universal flow chart that fixes that no, covers yeah. every base and all of a sudden that and system does nothing and that system goes too far and then that person never knows anything yeah. they never know anything so they never get to your level yeah and so they never would they yeah. wouldn't even get close you, actually they wouldn't even start the journey because they never had to learn and that's what i find so with you the miss way, your destiny on the way you took it to find it for sure yeah. and how yeah. often do we find it with coaches who i want a system i want to know how exactly I need to warm people up for this, or how do I progress this? I need, mm -hmm. I want a whole system. How do I plug it into my group classes? How do I sell it? Just give me a goddamn spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it doesn't work that way. And I think you've dug in pretty hard on making sure that that's not the way that you're going to teach because it doesn't work. No, because that's not the way life works. Yeah. And that, that's something, that's actually what I'm writing the book about, really, is the, uh, in a, sorry, in a way, it's the art of learning. I'm going to call it the double, double slit events. Mm -hmm. But my point is, um, like, that's a conversation I had with a certain guy on a podcast where I was set up, mm -hmm. right? If I'm on that podcast, where... Um, the guy was like, well, I don't deal with, the, for example, top CrossFit Games athletes or what, they're outliers. And I'm like, and then the idea is that if I stay in the center, I can understand a system better than through the outliers, which is the greatest mistake you can make, yeah. right? By the way, this is poor science because any good scientist would tell you like you need to study the edges of a system to understand its center. Mm -hmm. There's too much noise in the center. Like for example, the example I used like many podcasts ago was like, who's, uh, that's actually Jordan Peterson, who use it as, a, as an example. Who's more aggressive, men or women? Who's more am amicable, men or women? If you look, uh, uh, more aggressive, it's six, in the center, it's about 60-40. Yeah. If you average people, it's about 60-40 men or women. 60-40 mm -hmm. is not a percentage high enough for you to go men. Yeah. But if you look at the edges of the system... The most extremely aggressive most are almost top always Most 1,000 most aggressive people, they're all men. Yeah. Right. Amicable women, amicable person, top 1,000, you'll find women. Mm -hmm. So you can say... Women are more amicable, men are more aggressive, right? Is it a generalization? Yes, yeah. obviously, because if you go in the center, you will find some women that are far more uh, aggressive than men and some men that are far more amicable than women. <coughs> but through the outliers, do you understand not the rule of a system, but it's, it's trends? Well, I think discovering what something isn't is important too. This is, so yeah. this is the way a lot of the things that I approach this with my diagnostic stuff, yep. which is what, in my opinion, this is why I was drawn to coaching thing generally, coaching and business, yep. is I believe all of it is people in connection first and then problem solving is the way yes. I always looked at it. Yeah. And so it always, I always took everything with that approach. And, but I remember watching a thing on, I don't think we talked about this this week. It's very, we've done a lot this yeah. week. But, but did, did I talk about the Unabomber thing? No. Okay. So when they were first doing the profile for the Unabomber, yeah. they did psychological profiles yeah. based on the few letters that they got from the guy. Mm -hmm. And what happened was they're looking at it based on what he's saying. What is he saying? Yeah. Well, he says this, he says this. So they plugged in all this shit that didn't, 
wasn't relevant. Yeah. You know, they were making connections that weren't there because it's only what he's telling yeah. you. Yeah. And, and, exactly. And, right? And yeah, so, and then the guy came along and, and at this point, psychological profiles were not a thing. Yeah. It was not a thing, not even an art, not a science. It yeah. was, they hated the whole thing. And, and what, pseudoscience. Yeah. And what he found was, was, it didn't matter, right? It's not scientific. Yeah. It isn't. But it doesn't. Well, but it doesn't mean you can't be right. That doesn't not, mean it's not reasoning. That, that, okay, but that's. Yeah. I would disagree because there's a scientific process, correct? Which is a Bayesian inference. Yeah. Which so, I'm guessing that's what he ended yeah, up so, doing. So, so let yeah. me go with this. So, yeah, yeah. So, so what it means is, is, is yes. though, though there's his. Stop it, interrupting. It, you, is that it's what reasoning, <laughs> though. You know what I mean? What he is is he's just being yeah. reasonable. Like I think that's this, a scientific process. And so process. what he did instead of trying to infer from the limited things he said, he's like, well, we do have a batch of all these things he talked about. What didn't he talk about? And that's now when I start describing what specifically never came up in any of those letters. Now you start understanding how that profile fit the man. That's Bayesian that's a, inference. Yeah, that's a person who did, who they read there like there was no references to pop culture. There's no references to any technology whatsoever. No internet, no TV, right. no nothing. Uh, there is no references to having a family. The matter of fact, there isn't even speaking on the family as a concept yeah. in it. Yeah. And so the whole thing was, trying yeah. to, and then all of a sudden, based on the things that he was not talking about, then you understood what he was. He lives by himself. Yeah, but yeah, they, yeah and yeah. so that's how they, and right. all of a sudden they had a profile that was accurate. Yeah. And, and then that it was actionable. All right. That is, by the way, that is the scientific process yeah. by definition. When you know, I talked about Bayesian inference, like what is it you don't know? Yeah. But it's, it's all part of that. Yeah. And you pay the probabilities. It is actually science. Yeah. That's the problem is too, is what we think, you know what people think is science is a Newtonian world where you, it's a Lego theory where you put a small block after a small block and then that, 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 mm -hmm. that, and then at the end you get a big Lego. Yeah. And actually that's not true at all. And, and so what happens is if you, but if you don't introduce that, because there is no connection to that, right? I can't yeah. draw via data a connection to a thing he didn't say exactly. representing what he is. I mean, right? yes, you can. You so could. Probabilities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, uh, what I thought was just really, I don't know, it was interesting to the way that I used to diagnose uh, technical or electrical or t mechanical problems was it's fine when there's a thing, there's a wire, and it's broken, or a part isn't doing right. the thing. That's easy. If it's just this, yeah. What if they call you and they say it's, it's shut off out of nowhere like three times last night, but it's working now? And it works the first five yeah. times you fire it. And yeah. it works the whole time you're there. Yeah. What do you do then? Right. Well, now I have to start going through some counterfactual arguments. Where, okay, what could have happened? Yep. What are the 10 possible scenarios that would fit what they're describing? What's the possibility that they're wrong? Right. Which is also yeah. true because yeah. they don't know either. And so now right. I have to start building this collection of information with no assumptions. You cannot make any assumptions. And that's the true. And okay, so see, that yeah. makes you a true scientist of what you were doing. Yeah. Because it's not science, it's that's how things work. Yeah. The new AIs, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the problem is we, again, we want a Newton world where you can only draw conclusions from what happened. It's like, no, what doesn't happen is just as important as what does. Yeah. And, and it was interesting, so that... Well, that movement, that, you see it all yeah, the time, so, yeah. So that, that process, like that's the process, and it's not a process, right? But that, is, yeah. that was my but process. But it is. But I could, never, it is. I could never write that down and hand yeah. that to a six-month-in technician. But they have through math. Yeah. I kid you not. Like what you've done is, what well, we're talking about Bayesian and friends, it's exactly that. Yeah. You drew probabilities for all the stuff, including mm -hmm. the stuff you didn't know. Yeah. You tried to make it, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and in the end, there's times where you have to take action on data that you don't fully have. Which means you're like, okay, well, these, now based on yeah. all of this, this is my best shot. And then if you're real with your client, you can say, yeah. hey, listen, I think it can be this or this. I could do nothing. Yeah, It's working now. It was working when I got, I could but do let nothing. Me try but, something. Yeah. but I could try this, you pay for this. Right. And if it doesn't fucking work, I'll stand behind it. Right, okay. And so go. what you need to find a problem was a stepping stone, mm -hmm. right? Going like, let me try this. Yeah. The problem is you don't know what that stepping stone is. Mm -hmm. Right, and so you go like, look, I have to find a stepping stone. I just don't know where it is. So I'm gonna to have to fucking try everything. Yeah. Right. So let me see if I can figure out where it's not. Yeah. Right. So I can narrow the the field, but after that, I'm gonna to have to try shit until I find one. And the key is, you cannot find. You don't know where the first stepping stone is. The more you try to narrow your vision of the problem, the less chances you are to find the stepping stone. And a lot of it was the way that I learned in that field. Meaning, I had. I had no experience in none of it. Yeah. I mean, before I even got into that job, I had never used a tool yeah. in my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? My yeah, dad yeah. was a school teacher. Yeah. You know, I wasn't like a handy guy. And so we had done, I, when I had started in that, I didn't know even how to check electrical current or what that meant. Yeah. And I didn't go to school for it. Yeah. So what it was, was Tyler, this thing isn't working. 
do you think you can figure out how to fix it? It didn't matter that I didn't know what any of the stuff right. meant. What it was, was I believed that I could figure out how to fix it. Yeah. So then I poked around and based on a little bit of con connecting the dots in this thing, getting it right, yep. sometimes getting it wrong, 12 years later, I don't believe that there's a single issue in that field that I right. wouldn't be able to solve right. with enough so, time. What you did is there's actually an AI right now, there's called something called Novelty Search. They wrote a book about it. It's, a, it's, the, it's exactly that idea. Yeah. So we'll actually we'll talk about that book. But So to explain my point a little bit better about the system of strong fit, what I mean by that is I, um, and I explain what I mean, but um, a high paying job will make it unlikely for you to become rich. Mm -hmm. Right, how weird is that? Yeah. Sorry. So why? Because being within certain defined limits, which is where a high paying job is, will diminish the chance of you becoming an outlier. Yeah, right? you will so, not become an outlier. Yeah, you will not become an outlier. Why? Because once you have a high paying job, your skill is being narrowed to a very specific task. Yeah. Right. To fit that to basic fit that value. Thing. That's that why you're getting doing. paid yeah. more money. Yeah. The problem with that is that because your set of skill is so defined toward a small area, mm -hmm. is that the stepping stone that you need, the stepping stones, because there's more than one, to need to be rich are all over the place, yeah. right? And it might be going right or going right, or that. But that high paying job is narrowing you so focusedly that chances are you're going to miss the stepping stone to become rich. Yeah. What does that mean? That means that uh, greatness will never take the form that you expect, which means, for example, Johnny Depp started as a musician and ended up being an actor. Uh, Colonel Sanders. Yeah. So the story of Colonel Sanders, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, he had a, uh, he was cooking through, since he was six years old for his family, but he tried everything. He was, I think, a taxi driver, whatever, jobs. And at the end, he had a uh, gas station and he started making chicken for his clients in the back and that exploded from there. He, there is very, very few writers that went to school to write and became successful writers. Yeah. Um, some were lawyers, like what they were, they were observing people. And at some point at the age of, 30, 40, 50, they go like, I need to write. But before that, they didn't write. Why? Because they had nothing to say. Right. So it's, it's all that stuff. Like you don't know, like you want to achieve greatness. Okay. But you don't know the form it's going to take. And there are stepping stones to take you there. And the key is you don't know where the stepping stones are. You don't even know which field they're in. Well, and that's the thing. So say you take it. This is, we talk about all the time, choosing metric target, those things, yeah. right? If your target is this high paying job, well, you'll get it. Right? And that's as far as get it. Yep. And, and, and I believe, this is just something I've seen, heard, whatever, is that if you really want to be an, an outlier, even in any line of work, is what, what you do kind of need to very specialize, right? However, you don't want to specialize in something you don't really want to do either. That's the thing. Meaning you, don't know you need the to find field. the thing yeah. that you need but to specialize in. But that's the key, is in. you don't know the field you're going to need to yeah. specialize in. But for example... So compromising want... too early right. is almost so, what this is, right? Like, well, yeah, yeah, because the key is... Uh, you have a passion in life, right? If you don't know what it is, you won't get to choose it. Mm -hmm. It chooses you, yeah. right? So take um, Steve Jobs. He was in college for calligraphy. That's the class he was taking. With. Imagine if he had stayed in college. He, yeah. he would use that pen really well, <laughs> right? But it's by going like, I don't want that. Like, I don't even know where I'm going. And then, you know, like the connections gets made and then suddenly you have Bill Gates and then you have Pixar and, yeah. but... You know what I mean? Like it doesn't work like that. Nothing in life works like that. But that's back to the by who talks about that. Nassim Taleb mm -hmm. with the Black Swan events. Anything meaningful in your life happens through a Black Swan event, which means you could not predict it. Greatness is unpredictable by definition. So you can aim to be great, but on what shape it's going to take, you cannot guess. Yeah. It's unpredictable. So the only way you can achieve greatness is by trying stuff and life on the way there will take you through left and right and yeah and then eventually you'll end up great but not at the thing you thought you were going to great at yeah it's that's it, it works 99 percent of the time it works like that so that's why a high paying job will diminish the likelihood of you getting rich because by taking the high paying job you'll become very good at something like this which means you won't invent the iphone yeah you won't invent the whatever the fuck got people rich. That's actually, and it works. So musician, artists have, seen, have said that all the time, but so did economists like Nassim Talab. That's what he's saying. It's like, have your money stable there, but then you're going to have to take some of your money and just put it on, yeah. not even random stuff. At the very least, yeah. only seeking stability is not going to give you the outlier That's outcome. all you're going to get. Yeah. 
Um, but even high paying job, because you think, you see that all the time. You see people like, go like, yeah, but if I start at 100,000, then I'll put this on my house and that. And before they think it's you know, linear, I'm too. a billionaire. Like everything, they got to go from 100 to 110 to 120 right. to 130. So they want the Lego theory. Yeah. And then all those people end up getting stuck at 200,000 a year yeah. or 300. But they never get to the people they aim to be, which is a true millionaire. Most of the millionaires get, it's Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Like the dude is a billionaire. Do you think he went to school? Okay, if he worked like that, that means in college, there'd be a super one one on one class where <laughs> are we going to teach you to be great? You're going to, and then we're going to teach you the Lego theory, and that's all you need to do. Then that means that all people that went through school the longest mm -hmm. would be the smartest, most successful people in life. It's not always how it goes. <laughs> that means all those economy uh, professors would all run hedge funds on the side yeah. and be the richest people on earth. And guess what? They make $150,000 a year. If they're lucky, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work so, like that, but we want it to be like that. And the coaches out there, that's what they want. They come to us and they go, give us a system. I'm like, if I give you a system, I just make sure you'll never be a good coach. Yeah. Because you know what it takes to be a good coach? All the other shit that I did. L uh, run away from home at 14, go live in Africa. Come back to France, go live in Paris. Then after that, move to the US. Then move to Brazil, then move back to the US, then move to Europe. In the meantime, become a black belt in Jiu Jitsu. Uh, go strongman until you do a thousand pounds. Like, yes. if you want raise my system, raise a child. Raise a child on your the businesses. Uh, do the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. So raise your child while running around the world without a house, like three weeks in a different country. Uh, yeah, as a single father. Yeah. Um, while having to, you know, do all the bills. And by the way, get ready for the barbell shrug whenever it comes. If you're going to take my system, then you take all my experiences with it. So you don't get to come and say, now that you've done it, just give me the, the you know, the bullet the, points, the but not, not the other stuff that you failed. Just give me where you succeed so I can succeed. Yeah. And guess what? That's not how it's going to work because I don't know what the stepping stones for you is. And my point is you don't know either. So you're going to have to fucking go like this. And greatness will take you somewhere, but guess what? It won't take you where I am. Yeah. It'll take you where you will be, not me. You cannot use my system as a bullet point stop. So a lot of them, that's why they like the fucking uh, control function stuff, because they go, that's a bullet point I can use in my business. Exactly. And you know what it means? It means you will stay exactly as you are. And so we, that's exactly why we're prefacing this the subject we're getting into yes. this week with this is because because this is well because, no, it does I'm not keeping me on track it's, yes but it does matter because, are you saying you don't want to talk about active inference no 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 no, no. I'm, what, what, I, what I am saying is like it, is that what we're going to lay out is it's one of the basic things that we always want to get back to right so we'll teach yep. one of the basic principles that have been around for a long time but some of those things because they're, they're very simple and universal if you will or yep. universally yeah, yeah. applied is that they uh very often people just latch onto the concept yes, exactly. and they don't do... Because they understand that one. Yep. And they go like, I'm going to focus all my energy on this because I get that one. Yeah. But you have to understand, on your way to greatness goes through active inference because you're going to go, I don't understand it, but it kind of makes you think a little bit. And then you say, you t said something on Bayesian inference. What's the difference? And then you start to Google it and you spend five minutes on it. But then he opens that little gap in your brain where that experience over there suddenly fits with that one. And then that barista course that you're supposed to be taking, then suddenly you go like, oh, craftsmanship. And now you start to build all that experience that you need from when that fucking stepping stones happen. Yeah. You're ready. Well, I think too, like, so with a concept, even like the control function or like we'll get into yeah. later today is like, I, I learn it. Obviously, it's, it's actually basic. It's pretty easy to pick up on what it yeah. means very yeah. simply. But then I want people to really take these things and be like, now, really apply it to you I apply and your this. thing. And, exactly. and meaning, meaning it's okay with the control function. If you're a very type A person, I get a client comes in and I kind of can, I can not only can think about where maybe we want to start some of those things. If you're that type of person, write it down, map out fully that order based on that principle, do it. I'll never do that, but, but that's okay if that's how your application, your execution and you do how it. that works. Um, and so with what we're going to get into today as, as I would encourage people to really experiment with exercises with this, do it wrong in a way where you understand the cost of being on the other side of it. And like, that's how but you have to learn Applying to not just lifting, applying to everything. life, applying to jujitsu, applying yeah. to everything. By the way, I do think because we're going, I go so much in active in France and all that shit is why people don't invite me on podcasts anymore. Oh, I haven't really? been invited. So <laughs> yeah, because I think I'm at the stage where people get a, I have no fucking clue what he's talking about. 
B, none of my listeners want to hear that there is, because they won't understand either. There is some of it too where we find when you go on other podcasts, is it's tough because you're not talking to your audience. Yep. So you kind of don't know where you have to start sometimes. Yeah, yeah but then the host doesn't know either because now yeah. basically I'm like, just talk. I like I can talk about anything, yeah. but you want me to talk about what I'm the what shit I'm, I'm right working on right now? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. at this point it's like there's 65, 70 hours of material you need to get caught up on. <laughs> exactly, but so I think it's actually one of the largest problem I face is there's a lot of people in a way that would like to talk to me, and I've heard about some two that I mentioned after where they uh, were through a third person that works with them. I was told where the guys were like, uh, we're trying to match what you're saying now for, to what to match two years ago. And apparently they can't, so they don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. So they kind of use our stuff. They just don't know how to train. <laughs> no, you know, so you know what they do is they use our stuff, they make it into very fancy words, and then they turn it as a question they never answer. Mm -hmm. Like there's a guy that I'm thinking about, you know who that is, very specifically where he's always asking a question, but never answering it. But the way he asks a question is done in a very, let's say, pedantic way, which yeah. it, it just sounds so smart. But every single time it's like, look, there's something there. Yeah, but that's a question. So, oh, look, something there. Yeah, what is that? Well, I'm not answering that. I'm just saying there's something there. Yeah. Down in a very, it sounded very smart. And I'm like, just ask me then. Because <laughs> yeah. I know it's coming from me. Come on, yeah. I'm not, I'm a good at patterns. I know it's coming from me. Yeah. Just ask me, I'll answer. But that's the problem. Is like, they barely <laughs> know how to uh, ask the question. And whenever I start to answer it, they go like, I don't get it. Well, and that's and that's that's where that's a problem with not even not having assimilated any of this information. Right, knowledge. and you know why? Because they are stuck in one field. Mm -hmm. The reason most people don't understand uh, what I'm talking about is because I refer to mathematics, and then there's some quantum mechanics, and then there's some economy, and the economic, you know, like yeah. good hard law and stuff like that. But at the end, they all basically say the same thing. The book I'm reading right now is about artificial intelligence, and the first chapter is almost. It's exactly the same concept as Nassim Taleb, Black Swan events. It's the same idea. One did it from the economy perspective. The other one did it from the computer science perspective, yeah. like AI. And guess what? They say the exact same. Which is, and they say what I say all the time about, like you need, like for example, when people ask us, well, how do I get good at podcasts? Become interesting. Yeah. Start how, there. Yeah. yeah. How do I pick up chick? Be interesting. Mm-hmm. Right, like, but what do people want? Well, you, you basically. What do I say? How do I? Yeah, you had beautiful women in your life. What did you do? Uh, I became interesting. Start here. Yeah. But that's right. So it's so what they want is a system to talk to girls. There is no system to talk to girls. She's either will like you or she won't. By the way. By the way. It's not up to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to her. Whether she likes you or she doesn't. Yeah. But and but you know what they like? They like. The way you move, they like your confidence, they like, so they, they don't even, like Carla told me that once, it's like, I don't care that you're right, I just care that you're sure. Yep. I was like, women are so weird, but My I totally get it. My wife's the opposite, because I'm very sure all the time, and she's convinced she, that I'm not right. That's why she's your wife, she likes but it. But she's convinced that I'm not right. You're never right, there's never. a matter, she doesn't think I'm right either. <laughs> but that's why, she's like, you're never going to be right anyway, just be sure, that way I can plan based on your fuck-ups. I'm like, sounds Perfect. like a winning mechanism. Perfect. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's the same thing, it's like if you ask me, give me a system to talk to beautiful women. I'm like, be interesting, get jacked. Get Start those. Um, get a tattoo on your head. It always helps. Um, <laughs> and then when you get talk to her, have something to say, but not with words, not as a system. Yeah, you There's no one to, liner you if you go, be. hey, what's up? Yeah. Hey, you will be my wife one day. You just don't know it yet. Yeah, when you're a nerd, yeah, it doesn't work well. <laughs> well, yeah, but if yeah. I go, he says, like, you're going to be on the, on the last first date you ever take. If you say it right, they'll be like, wow, okay, I like your confidence. <laughs> but if you go say, ah, what's up? How are you doing? Yeah. You will be on the last first date you will ever take. <laughs> okay, police, um, yeah, get yes, out exactly, here. sex offender. <laughs> right, so be interesting. So for coaches out there, it's like, you want to be great? Good. Start by being good. Yeah. So when we give you this thing we'll present you with now, what I want you, the main thing is you, all, you need to use it. You need to do. Yeah, you need to do it. Stop memorizing. Like, yeah. you only memorize what you fail to learn. Because if you, so if you, if you memorize it, it means you didn't learn it. And this is the thing I say, like, if you take this, hear it, this concept, and then you just start parroting it to your clients and having them do it before you've done then anything, missed you've missed problem. everything. You will not. You, you, what you're trying to get out of us when you do that is a higher paying job. Mm -hmm. 
literally. You're trying to get the system so you can go from 12 bucks an hour to 15. So more than that, like to 40 bucks an hour to 70. Yeah. That's what you're trying to do with. So in a way, you're trying to steal information from us instead of knowledge. I want you to steal knowledge, not information. You're trying to get the information from us, not stealing because you're paying for it. Let me pay to get some information so I can go from 40 to 30. That's what you think is going to allow you to become a better coach, and you're wrong. What you're going to do is you're going to steal knowledge, which means you're going to get all that we say, and you're going to apply it to yourself and turn it into your flavor, and that will turn you great. But that idea that you can systemize what we say for you just to get 10 bucks or 20 bucks more an hour during your private uh, Per, during your personal session as a coach means you will fail. Yeah. You will have that high paying job that never allows you to become rich. And if you think, yeah, but I'll be happy just not struggling, that's not true. Because when you get to that stage where, we talked about the last podcast, where you don't struggle anymore and you make some money at the end of the month, now what? Yeah. Yeah. Now what? And I can tell you now, and what? I, and now I, nothing. And I also believe this. We're, we are driven to make progress, that it's okay to watch Never outcome. Yeah. You're not happy when you reach the top on the mountain. Yeah. You're happy when you're almost there. We are happy about the journey, never the destination. The destination yeah. never makes you happy. It's the journey there when you feel you're getting there, you're almost winning. That's what you're, ha you're happiest. Yeah. Best moment in org orgasm is riding the wave. It's not <laughs> after you're like, is it over? I'm hungry right? now. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but like that, like, yeah. that's what is the most pleasurable, is that moment. Yeah. What's the most exciting part? It's, um, uh, where was that? Not Montalban, Monterrand. Monterrand. He was actually a priest, that's another problem. But he said the best moment of sex is going up the stairs. <laughs> right, because you know that you're anticipation? Like, yeah. You're like, is it? Happening? I think it's happening. Yeah. yeah! Right. <laughs> so, it's all, so it's about the journey, not the destination. Yeah. Right. As a coach, it's going to be the same thing. Like You cannot systemize what we do. Yes, it'll make you that much better. And by doing that, you go here, and then you'll crash completely. Like This is how the world works. And I'll be, that's not the way to learn. The problem is if you do that, you're just memorizing. Yeah. You stop your learning process by doing that. This is not how this works. That literally will be the book I'm going to write is that. Because this is where I feel the biggest progress has to be made. Yeah. Is You're trying to be mean lots of ways just by applying what I do. and But you're missing everything that I do on the side. Yeah. You don't know me. You don't know what I do. You don't know the number of seconds spent on watching. Like, I don't, I don't watch TV. I watch quantum mechanics video from Leonard Siskin that night. That's actually my kick. <laughs> I swear, like, yeah, yes, I want to watch a movie with you. Yeah, and then I read a fucking book about AI. I, yeah. thought, I thought Julian was playing chess one time on his iPad, so I left him alone for like an yeah. hour. And then it was, I was like, so did you win? He was like, no, I was just watching people play chess. I was like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I do for kicks. Yeah. Because it makes my brain stronger. Yeah. It's so, visualization. So, yeah. So, let me. So, yeah. so what we're going to cover today yeah. is what we're going to. Julian's going to explain what it is, give you to experiment with. The West, yeah. Is the West, which is low, which is West weight. It's W E S, weight. Weight bearing. Eccentric, weight bearing, eccentric, and skill. Yeah. Now, we'll get into defining all that in a moment. But, but what this really can help you do is to define, build better ways, methods to, uh, of, you know, your own ways to push intensity, also to, to still recover well, the point and, was to the, limit, the, and to limit like your overall, like yeah. just stress on the so body. The, yeah. So the point was intensity, right? First of all, this yeah. goes CrossFit style, the sled, all that stuff. And sorry, uh, one who talked about it was Coach Abhijayev, you know, mm -hmm. the creator of the Bulgarian system for Olympic weightlifting. And he, uh, he came out of, well, it's homeostasis, uh, not homeostasis, so it's homeostasis. It's like the greater the stress on the, on the body, the greater the quality of the protein being produced. We see that actually in, uh, in, with the DNA. Anyway, uh, we see it on the biological level. So his idea was like, the more I stress my athletes, the better they're going to be, the better quality the muscle they're going to produce. All right, so he decided to push them physically and psychologically to the max. And to a large degree, it was proven right in the sense of the results followed. Yeah. What he didn't talk about is the cost, like broken down mentally, broken down yeah. physically. Then there was a, there was a bit of a uh, kind of a farm system aspect to that operation where it was and kind of meant to, to chew some people yeah, up. Yeah, and you have to, to put a gun to their head. Yeah. You have to have complete control of them and sacrifice a hundred to make one. Yeah. There's a number of things we did not talk about. about uh, yeah. They don't talk about when they talk about the Bulgarian system. Yeah. Right, so I was like, all right, so that's not applicable to the 99%, which is really who I've always trained. I had some top pro athletes and I had some top CrossFit Games athletes and stuff like that. But my, 
again, my goal is everybody, not just the top athletes. So I was like, all right, so we can't just understand the idea, but like using it with a barbell sounds very hard. And so that's why I'm trying to develop the West idea is like, how do I keep bringing up the intensity without breaking people? Because that's a time where I noticed that you could push people on the sled mm -hmm. and they were fine. But if you did the same shit on, let's say, a, uh, I remember Jesse Marundi, the strongman, uh, early, early on, American strongman, he died. He died training. He had like a heart attack. Yes, I remember it Nick a, It was in an event, wasn't it? No, no, no. no he was training. Okay. He was training at the gym. Okay. Remember Nick Beck, Nick, Nick's Nick Best. best wife. Okay. Right. She was married to Jesse. No shit. She was there know. when he died. Okay. Oh yeah. So that's why she's still. Uh, that's her name. Uh, I forgot her name. She, I, I met her on everything, mm -hmm. and she was married to to Jesse Marundi, who one of uh, one of the early uh, lean. Strong man, American strongman. Like he, he finished second to Pujanovsky okay. at the world's strongest man. So he was like uh, tall, big, like a very interesting it was guy. Was the jacked podium? That's what that was. Oh yeah, he was. <laughs> uh, Dominic Filiu finished third. Remember okay. Dominic Filiu, the I first guy to I be do. six eight, four hundred pounds. No. Yeah, yeah. He was an, he was the uh, Canadian dude who could uh, who was like literally six eight, four hundred pounds. He was the first of the big ones, yeah. right? And there's. Um, I remember the squat event with the barrels, yeah, right? Yep, yep. Narrow stance, as to grass, he finished all of them. <laughs> he, he couldn't press the 100 kilo stone because he was too small for him. Really? The just dude was jammed him Dominic Filiu. He was, you have to see him. Okay. He's the first of the giants. But at the time, the world's strongest man wasn't built for those. Yeah. So today he would murder everybody. Yeah. Back then he couldn't. Yeah, he didn't have the was... drive. He didn't seem to have the drive because yeah. he was just wanted. He was, he was the first genetic monster I've ever seen. Anyway, so um, uh, where was I with Jesse Marley? Right. I don't know. Oh yeah, right, right. So he was, uh, we were, he was going through intensity and everything. So I saw people. He was also he could snatch, by the way, uh, 365 or shit like that for a strong man. I was actually, yeah, yeah no, full snatch too. By the way, so very impressive stuff. But his stuff was intensity, like everybody else. Yeah. I kind of lost track, but I'm gonna go back, get back to it anyway. So I've seen people pushing the sled. They were fine. Right, right, right. right. He had this thing where a guy named Sarge did uh, 90, was it 98 reps on the squat body weight. Dude was 200 pounds, put 200 pounds on the bar, did 98 reps. Like, I think he felt like two of short over 100. The dude had like those massive, intense circuit CrossFit style, but would take people to the brink of death. Or in the case of Jesse Mardi, actually kill yes, him. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, that was the thing. And so Jesse Mardi would do four or five or 20 once a week or shit like that, which uh, weighing 350. Hurts my feelings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which when you weigh 350 and you don't, you don't necessarily have cardio is a rough one. That right? just makes my lungs hurt. Yeah. Well, for sure. But, uh, but imagine sad. <laughs> how often can you do 90 reps on the squat? But, you know, and I'm not if, talking if I, about... If I ever went there, it would be once a year at that because literally how long would most. it take for your knees to recover? Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's when I was like, look, but that's not even counting what it costs me mentally. Yeah. I like, I, I'm not doing that. Right. Again. And weird. so I was like, okay, so what stops you? And I was like, all right, so I can do it on the sled, but I can't do it on the squat. So there's a problem. And then I'm starting to look at CrossFit where people are like intensity over form. I'm like, uh, I would agree with that statement, but that the fun of on the exercise, because what if form is like a snatch? If I start to fuck up on the form, there are consequences to that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start popping my shoulder, dropping the bar on my head. So I was like, and of course, that's not a call for perfection. It's just that we don't want to widen that margin of error up. Well, that was a, that was right? a problem, right? Yeah. That was a problem. So I was like, well, skills seem to be an issue. Mm -hmm. So if we say intensity of the form, which, as Abhijay have said, is necessary to produce the good muscle, yeah, the, yeah. the muscle, like the quality of the muscle. I was like, all right, so that means that skill alone will stop me. Mm -hmm. Right. I was like, so if an exercise has too high of a skill, it will stop me from pushing the needle for two reasons. One, uh, there's a moment where I just can't snatch anymore because catching is so much of a skill. If I push for a certain intensity, I just can't do it anymore. I still have the juice to go. Yeah. I just can't maintain the skill anymore. That's when you go full sympathetic, coordination goes to shit, fight versus, uh, versus flow. That means I have to stop. Otherwise, I'd be in flight. <laughs> then I drop Shakes it every time. Everywhere. And then, you're, yeah, and everything goes. And again, I'm going to fuck up my shoulders doing that. The consequences on recovery are tremendous. So if I push a high skill too high, I won't be able to recover. And I won't be able to stay in fight. Because the coordination required for that movement does not let me go full-blown full blown sympathetic. So I was like, all right. So skill, obviously, is a problem. So I can push on the sled, but I can't do it on the squat. The squat alone has too much skill. Mm -hmm. It will fuck me up physically and it will stop me from reaching true failure. And if I don't, if I reach true failure, the, the risk on my joints is so high. 
I was like, that doesn't sound like a winning mechanism. Yeah. Right? So that was one. Was the skill. Um, eccentric, why? What happens if I push the eccentric to absolute failure? You will be so, so, so fucking, fucking sore. sore. Chen, and, rhabdomyolysis, yeah. right? As a chance, and we saw, I didn't even know what it was until CrossFit, by the way. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck is rhabdomyolysis? <laughs> and CrossFit got us to Google the shit real fast. Uh, right, so that's the problem. What if I push the eccentric? You will destroy the muscle past your point of recovery. And well, that's that, how and that, and that's and, and what I find with that stuff too, if I do too much, I, I, too much work, too much eccentric yeah. work, too much tempo work. If I, I, I'll push it sometimes to make sure I do hit it, you know, yeah. when I'm trying to do it. Yeah. But, but, but not if I'm trying to seek intensity, correct? And you can do it on a regular basis. Yes. Because it takes you five days to recover. Yeah. And, but if I, when I do it, what I notice is you really do have to be careful. Because if you overdo yeah. it, what happens is I did the work, I did the work well, I, you know, and then, but the next day my body goes, boy, Yep. You, that's too much. That was a bit much, and now the next time I try to go there, it's not going to be available for me because it, yeah, because my body knows because it was too much. It's like and bitch, you, bitch, you, you fucked up last time. Yeah, and doing it again. now it's dangerous because you can't recover from it. Now if the bear is coming, you're fucked because you can't run anymore. Yeah. And they are defense mechanism. And by the way, let's talk about it from two perspectives. The people I train without steroids, mm -hmm. which is us, we can't do muscle group once a week. Yeah. Like you can only do that if you're under, on, yeah. on steroids yeah, you because have to you go get to maintain. Two to three days, yeah, so. like it's and it's been all this has been tested mm -hmm. and everything. The problem is on steroids is I do shoulder once a week. By day three, then I, you can I maintain. maintain yes, and, and then yeah. I can keep going. When you don't, you drop down. So that means when you are. When you're not on steroids, you have to do shoulder two, three times a week if yeah. you're a bodybuilder, right? Uh, that's why CrossFit yeah. has worked so much because they do it continuously. So you need some rest. Don't get me wrong, but you can't wait a week. So you can't blast yourself to oblivion once a week. Without steroids, it won't work. You have to go lower blasting more often. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is, right? Yeah. So my key was like, all right, so that means that the amount of eccentric that I push, put my body through matters. If I blast my hammies and it takes me five days to recover, by the time I can do hammies again, they have regressed. Yeah, you, can, you can't even do purposeful accessory work three days later, four days later. Right, and which I need yeah. to build muscle. Otherwise, it won't work. And on top of it, my body will go, dude, that's too much. So it won't let me push the intensity that hard anymore. And again, so the quality of the muscle will will suffer. So I was like, all right. And then what about weight bearing? Well, that was my problem with the squat is I'm putting the weight on my T-spine. Mm -hmm. What if I push my legs to the utmost point of giving up? Imagine what I'm doing to my T-spine, right? Yeah. To the joints. Imagine if you do that on a regular basis, like the risk you're taking, yeah. like the knees, the, the spine, all that stuff. If you push a set of squat at 200 pounds to 100 reps, Fuck me, like the, yeah. the, 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 the amount of work that you're doing, result-wise, is not, is not worth the risk you're taking on the stress on the spine and the joints. Yeah. Like over time, the probabilities of you paying for it are is just too high. And to pull back, this is, this is about finding the balance that, that works for you. Right. Again, you and I both train squatting with barbells. That's not what this means. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's not that. It's just like, it's you just can't... When I'm trying to find yeah. a place of intensity, if I do it with maybe the wrong tool, something with too much weight on the too too much weight bearing, too much eccentric, or too high mm -hmm. level of skill, my risk is too high and the right. cost so, is too high. For example, very simple example: you hold down the the sled sprint for two hundred mm -hmm. meters. Otherwise, I'm not talking to you anyway. So <laughs> most of our listeners will go on that. So remember after that sled where your legs just blew up. You know when you know when they blow up. You know when it's when you have to form all your legs on a parking lot. Yeah. And suddenly it's the best feeling in the world. You're <laughs> face down with your face on the parking lot and you start foam rolling your quads because you're cramping so bad. Yeah. Right. Most of you have had that feeling. If you haven't, go do it. Um, right. Would you reach that intensity on the squat? No. There's no fucking way. I never You would. wouldn't even try it. No. You wouldn't try it because your body's like, fuck no. Yeah. Because chances are you would, the consequences on your joints would be like, you'll never let yourself go that and I, far. And that, you know, I've had experience on the sled that I can describe only as, white, hot, searing, 100% transcendent pain. Well, you go, head what did I just Everything do? Everything is off. What's and, and you're like, what did I just do? And for, me, yeah. you know, and, and for me, because I'm not in great condition with my lungs and heart and all those things, like I get that comes on me very quickly. Yeah. So I get going and all of a sudden it's like, bitch, you're on fire. Yeah, exactly. And I yeah. fucking have had those experiences where I'll feel a little weird for the rest of the afternoon, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But the next, the next day, day, I'm not... Exactly. Right. So that was a very important. So that's why we, we did the West because it was weight bearing eccentric skill. The West principle was that it's like you need to find intensity, not all the time, 
Not mm -hmm. every day, that's not true either, right? But once in a while, you're going to have to push that barrier for, first of all, the physical aspect and the mental aspect as well. What if, what if a person overuses this in that, uh, what if your training consists of mostly this stuff here and it's too much intensity? What's on the other yeah, side? Yeah, it just crashes your system. You, I would assume that you're just going to be experiencing mm. too much misery. No, you're just going to go at 80% at 17 It doesn't feel good. You start pacing. And because your why, again, like I remember, the sympathetic nervous system responds to environment. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you were to do it with a group of friends where there's five of you and you're the biggest trash talkers ever and you have, you know, they're your friends, but yeah. deep inside, you need like to show, with your them, brothers, show them right? what's up. Yeah. So it's five brothers. Right. And you need to show them who's the boss. You could probably do that every day. Yeah. And, and just raise and raise and raise your level. But you need an environment that forces you there. And the more you do it, the greater your why has to be. So at some point you go like, why am I doing this? Yeah. Right. It's again, that's a diva brain. That's all that stuff. And for very good reasons. At some point, the energy being spent have to be justified. Mm -hmm. Your body has a, self, has a mechanism, the diva brain in there that requires you to have an explanation every time you expend more energy than a certain amount. Right. So the more you do it, the greater the energy being spent, the bigger the answer has to be. Yeah. The more you have to answer the question of why. Like there has to be a justification to do that. And usually more than once a week, you're gonna have a hard time coming up with so, a reason. So, so, like, so, so using this to find low OS yeah. movements isn't really necessarily like the way that your training should be built around. But, it's, but it should probably be the way that you find one, some ex aside from the intensity, yeah. some exercises that will maybe allow you a little more right. leeway in recovery? So let, let, let's decompose right. it in two, because there's two ways to the West. The yeah. first way is, the first part is, let's find intensity the highest builder. intensity possible. Yeah. And then the other part is, what happens when a, an exercise beats me up too much? Mm -hmm. So let's split it in two. Okay. First of all, there's highest poss intensity possible. All right. We need to get there once in a while, let's say yeah. once a week, right? So once a week, you need the highest possible. That means you need the lowest west possible. So you're going you're gonna to assign a number to each. Weight bearing, closest to zero as possible. Eccentric, closest to zero. Not zero, obviously, yeah. but closest to. Same thing on eccentric, same thing on the scale, right? So obviously, where has no weight bearing on the spine, no, almost no eccentric, almost no scale, is a sled. Yeah. That's why pushing a sled, you can go to max intensity, burn everywhere from head to toe, and you wake up the next day and nothing is beat up. Why? Because the waist is so low. So that's why we applied it for that once a week. And then after that, we can apply it to uh, that, for example, that CrossFit expression, which is intensity over form. Okay, so what does that mean? I want to reach, I want to push those legs. But the barbell back squat that I'm using beats me up. My, uh, my knees, my T-spine or whatever. Well, like we All talk right. about with the control function anyways, is you're always going to be hopefully making some sort of improvement from imperfect right. to closer to better, yep. to better with say the back squat. Meaning to make that progress work for you, you can't just use that tool of the back yeah, squat. Exactly. Right? So your back squat's not perfect, which means you do pay a little bit of a price every time you do it. You should still do it because yep. you need to get better. But when you can't be using that as a right. tool, so you let's have say to you want to make progress. That means we need to keep the intensity high. So back squat is so there's weight bearing, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. Skill is actually a lot of it. There's a lot of eccentric. So I would need to diminish one of those. Weight bearing, do I want to use less weight on the spine? Not necessarily, but so I would have to either diminish the eccentric or diminish the skill. Okay, so how would I do that? For example, I could do uh, Anderson squat, which diminishes yep. the skill, and, and certainly the eccentric. The eccentric. Yep. Okay, so that would work, right? All right. Or I could use, let's say, a sandbag. Sandbag is less pressure on the spine, less, less skill, because it's a more natural movement. The problem with the barbell back squat is it's unnatural movement, so the skill has to be much higher to, for, to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. So with the sandbag, you will have less, you will have a lot of weight bearing, but not on the T-spine, right? You have less, as much of eccentric, if not more, but you have less skill. So it kind of works. Do you want to work the structure of the squat? You can use uh, your carry, because your carry is actually more weight bearing on the spine, yeah. but it's less skill and there's almost no, no eccentric. eccentric. Yeah. So that would still, even though the W is higher, the ES is lower, so we still be a lesser number on the West scale. So that way I can still work what I need to work on, but without getting beat to shit by that exercise. Yeah. So if the, if the barbell back squat beats the shit of you, understand why. 
Which one is it? Is it the weight bearing, your structure? Is it the skill? You don't know how to go from IT to ET. You don't know how to use IT on the way down or whatever, right? Eccentric, maybe you don't have the hammies for it. So every single time your hammies are fucking, or your groin are fucking shot. Yeah. Okay, so decomposing it through the West tells you where the problems are. And from there, you can start addressing them. Right, it's that what we saw, for example, and then it reaches another problem for you that have group classes. Let's say I have, or even private class, but let's say I have Isabel on the, on the board. Isabel is 30 uh, snatches for time, right? All right, so I get nine people capable of doing it, and then I get grandma or Michael Mann or whatever that cannot snatch. So, old school CrossFit, like, well, we're going to give them a PVC pipe in order to train. Okay, you give them a PVC pipe. They do 30 times like this, and then they're gonna be the guy going high five yeah. at the end. Yeah, high fiving people. How do you think that person feels? Having achieved no intensity. Zero. While watching everyone Everybody's else. on the floor dying like, uh. so you're ostracized from the tribe. Mm -hmm. That's how you feel. You're that pussy that is there who did not push. And it's just the skill that's holding that person back right. at that point. So that's because the if problem. there, they don't if have there the skill, wasn't right. the skill, there would be a weight with which it would matter right. to them. Right, exactly. Don't have the they don't the have the skill, right? Yeah. And then it would kill them. So they can't push the intensity. So instead of that, how about we find a lower waist exercise for that person so they can get the stimulus just like everybody else. So how do I lower the skill? Well, what is the snatch anyway? What, what do we do the snatch for? What we want is the tr aggressive Explosive triple extension. extension yeah. Explosive triple extension. All right, so I could achieve that with a sandbag. Mm -hmm. Tossing a sandbag. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Tossing a sandbag over a bar, yeah. right? You have a rig, take a sandbag, like. So now, grandma takes touch or a med ball or whatever, tosses it 30 times. It's very taxing. But the point is, she had an aggressive triple extension yeah. for 30 reps, four times, and will finish the workout with the same stimulus at her level as all the other athletes. So now she's part of the tribe, she had the stimulus she wanted, she reached intensity, she will make progress. Whereas with the PBC, how long before that lady can do Isabel? She'll never do it. Yeah. She'll never do it. She'll do it not with intensity, not with the stimulus you're looking for for that exercise. So that idea that that old lady has to learn to snatch with a PVC, I'm sorry. That's, that's not true. Yeah. That's the one thing I disagree with CrossFit at the beginning is when they try to systemize it. Mm -hmm. Like everybody has to snatch. specific list of exercises and you Everybody has to snatch, yeah. But I believe that's actually uh, not what CrossFit is based on. What Greg Lassman said was like, the Olympic athletes and grandma, they all have the same needs. Percentages differ, and mm -hmm. I agree with that. So I would say percentages of the West differ. Yeah. In the sense of, grandma doesn't need to learn to snatch with a PVC. What grandma needs to do is an aggressive triple extension yeah. for her, not for Klokov, I've, for her. I've had, I've had people you know, with uh, histories of back injuries and stuff like yeah. that. I was talking to someone in the, actually this last week about it, and, and she had had back pain, and she always said, and her and her husband both were like, well, you know, deadlifting is just a thing that's really bad for her back. And I, and I said, I said, well, let's just back up here a little bit, yeah. right? And I, and I said, I don't care that deadlifting be the tool that she uses to fix her back, because right now it's not going to be worth doing anyways for her at this moment. Especially mentally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No fucking way. I yeah. said, but if we do whatever it is that we need to do to make sure that she doesn't have back pain and can make, go through that range of motion and build strength in that range of motion without back pain, she will be able to deadlift without it being a problem. Uh, by the way, deadlift, by the way, if you pick up a sandbag off the floor, is that a deadlift? Yeah. Technically it is, right? Yeah. So we're saying deadlift with a bar. Okay, so we're going back to the barbell. Yeah, and so then we got to move that. Yeah. So you have to get into movement patterns instead. Right, so the concept Greg Glassman talked about, right? Mm -hmm. I, could, I agree 100%, I could not agree more with it. It's the implementation where sometimes I disagree. Yeah. Well, they went from, we all need aggressive triple extension. I'm like, I agree, let's all snatch. They are disagree. Because yeah. I, I don't agree that that's the best implementation. If we all need aggressive triple extension, which I agree with, there are better ways to find that for grandma than a barbell. Do you think that- So I'm not hating on the barbell. Yeah. I'm just saying like for grandma, it is not the best form we can find in order to... I'm just thinking aloud here. Do you think that maybe that uh, that narrower approach to finding, you're like, this is the tool we use for this, 
thing it has, like you said, when they tried to systemize it and make sure that there's your there's your foundational movements, mm -hmm. there's da, 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 and this serves this purpose and this, and that maybe that all got interpreted too literally or too, yes. too far. I think it, it was too literal, and also the fact that Greg Glassman had five thousand dollars to open his gym. Yeah. So what do you use a barbell? Because you're not going to have seventeen different sandbags yeah. at the time. They don't even have sandbags, yeah. right? So it's our own mind made too later on, and then we come up with our own, right? But there's no yoke. There's, it's like I got five grand. I'm going to get med ball. You know, a GHG setup yeah. and barbell. That's the tool they used at the beginning. But that's not what was used to build CrossFit. What was used to build CrossFit is an idea, is Greg Glassman's vision of, of fitness. And by the way, his genius came from the simple sentences, we need to measure this, mm -hmm. which no one had done before, not like that. Yeah. But we did it for strength, but we didn't do it for fitness, for cardio, you know, outside yeah. of sports. Yeah. And so that was his genius. But so what made CrossFit CrossFit was the idea, the foundation of it, intensity for all, all that, and the measuring. Right? It was not the usage of the tools that he had at his gym where he was limited by the money that he had. Yeah. If you listen to the early Greg Glassman stuff, it's all about uh, in order to build a ditch, you can't just be a marathon runner. Um, yeah. Remember when he yeah. said that? All right, so who do you think, who do you think is going gonna, is gonna to do better at, build, at digging a ditch or wrestling a bear? An Olympic weightlifter or a strongman? Yeah, true. Right. Yeah, if you strongman. want functional strength, I'm asking... A strong man, yeah. not Reza Zadeh, remember the Olympic, yeah, between him and Haftor. I know who, if he comes down to doing shit, yeah. I'm asking Haftor, yeah. not Reza Zadeh, because as strong as Reza Zadeh was, he was with a barber. It does not necessarily apply to everything else. How come we don't have any of the top Olympic weightlifters and strongmen, even when they retire? There's because no it doesn't transfer. Yeah. No. Powerlifting doesn't cross Powerlifting. over either. It, not near some, as much as a you bit think. more, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, not as much as you yeah. think, but it's actually, yeah. yeah, the top ones, they don't do that good either, because yeah. it's, obviously skill involved, but it's that overall strength like that, that is, so I find that, for example, strongman gets, is far closer to the idea of CrossFit than Olympic weightlifting. I also think it's a much closer interpretation of what real functional strength I is. I believe so. You know, and, it, and it doesn't mean you have to be 400 pounds, but I mean, having a diverse set of strength, okay, a, so a very, Olymp what's the word, a well-rounded. Olympic weightlifting happened after the barbell. Yeah. So that means 150 years. We've seen strongmen for thousands of years. Exactly. Yeah. The Vikings all had it. What is strongmen if not farming, heavy farming, yeah. right? So how did the strongman competition started? During the Viking, they were doing it like you're the strongest guy in the village, farming, like we know that, and then we're gonna pit you against the other strongest guy from the other village, and that's how strongman competition started. It's always been there. It's like wrestling. It's the same basic functional strength. Yeah. So I believe we can apply it to, for example, in the case of uh, CrossFit, CrossFit principles. So CrossFit's thing too was was the intensity, right? So yeah. so to build upon this is this is what I found often with using low S things for my clients mm -hmm. who were um, intensity averse, right? And often they're because often, they're afraid of getting hurt. Yeah, they yeah. they they can be afraid of getting hurt. They could have just gone too hard with the wrong tool yep. before and been super fucking sore. And then anytime they start to get there, Happens they the panic. Yep. You see it, you know. Oh yeah. And or they're just not comfortable pushing at all at that point. Because and, they've which, never been which there. Which means they have to learn, right? So they start where they are. Right. And by the way, that's that's the most difficult because if you fuck up the first time, they'll never go to intensity mm -hmm. ever, or for the next five years. And that's usually what you see is they try one time, fuck themselves up, and the system is like never again. Yeah. So so what I always did with these is, is there this is the progression that I saw. Yep. Is and this is the way I thought it out in my head was that someone would go if, if, if let's just say it's me and I go push sled two hundred meters on a Monday die just fucking die just go so, oh we'll just yeah. die finish my session then the next day i get up my body knows that that was intense because yeah. it made me go pale and throw up yeah. and fucking and you'll you know, remember, trust me. You, know yeah, you start yeah. tingling everywhere yeah. and not in a good way and your ears right. ring and yeah. you know your heart stops for 30 or 40 seconds and then beats feverishly and might have happened <laughs> but then I, 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 these moments i don't remember <laughs> so that leads me to think i might have died a yeah. little bit but yeah. so so but so that is all a thing that my, your body is aware this shit's going on there, right <laughs> and so what what happens is it just kind of shuts you off but the next day which is usually when I can't there's a, yeah, when there's a price to be paid then yep. you know the, but the next day you get up and you look in the mirror, you're like i'm not why? So, By the way, which is the weirdest feeling. And like, what, and, how am I not bit to shit right now? And, and yeah. I don't know this mechanism. This is how I rationalize it to myself. Mm -hmm. But I, I always looked at it like at that moment, the next day, that's when my body went, oh, well, while it was unpleasant, 
That's only based on our interpretation of it. And you know, but yeah. what it really yes. was was not damaging. Therefore, the next time we get to that point, I know that it's not bad, and we can go further. Exactly. Not I know, but like my body knows. And you know why? Because you were safe. Yeah. And because so, at no point where your spinal joints had a chance to. What's the worst thing that's going to happen on the sled? You pass out, you hit your head and your teeth on the sled, which has happened, by the way. I believe to it. To friends of mine. But uh, short of that, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, for me to find ways to push intensity, I, I, I prefer to take people through that approach because it's, it is, I won't say linear, but it is a clearer path to that. There's, it's a, there's less bullshit in the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Towards like, if, I, if I'm trying to teach you intensity using two, this varying amount of shit, uh, you know, the, the assault bike's another one that, that works for that too. Exactly. Me, mentally, I had to think with you. Tell them your reason why you hate the assault right. bike. So I love it. It's, yes, it's very simple. Um, you go 60 seconds, max cal, mm-hmm. right? I got, that was my max? No, I did, I did 60 cal in 50 something seconds or some shit like that. Anyway, uh, let's say 60 cal in 60 seconds, right? So that's everything you have. Yeah. Right. So, and literally like you see triple, like I'm pretty sure certain bodily functions are stopping (laughs) at that stage because that's how it feels. It's certainly my legs are right. And I step out of the things and I'm going like, I'm going to die. Your whole world is fucked. Yes. It's like, I will never not feel pain for the rest of my life. (laughs) You know, like you're feeling so much pain. It's so shitty. You go like, I'm going to be stuck in that mode forever because there is nothing Right now, but the pain. Now. This yeah, is but the pain. This is all that exists in my world is the fucking pain I'm feeling right now. I turn around and the fucking thing hasn't moved. Nothing in the universe has changed. No. Nope. There is no... See, you agree with me. There is no... Nothing has changed. So that kills me. It's like, so yeah. you're telling me... At least me, if you pick something or you drag something... That's why I'm a simple guy. It, yeah. There's a weight over there. I pull it. It's here. Even if you put it I there... I made a difference in the world. Even if you Where's took it there and brought fuck? it back. Yes, it's but fine. that's the point. Yeah. Is the thing moved? It went on a journey. It was there. It's here. I changed the world. <laughs> My effort has made a difference in the world. Yeah. Where that fucking iodine hasn't moved an inch. Yeah. Oh, that kills me. I can't. I can't. I'm like, fuck you. And all of yous out there. And I'm like, what difference does it make? The only thing that has changed is that fucking number on the data thing. Yeah. And I'm looking at them going like, fuck you. <laughs> My, my you are not get you don't get to tell me how good I get that sled is there it's here I own the sled it was over there I made it come here so I'm like got yeah. you right <laughs> that fucking airline is just a number saying there's literally the figure yeah, going like it's it. now what it's like how was that here I now am what? yeah you know what you did nothing to me here's what I it's do. like you know you go and you punch a guy six times in the face and he goes are you gonna start he would be like fuck that's how I feel with the airline what I feel I, like a bitch who lost a fight every single time I'm on it what I end up doing is actually punching I, like i break air diets i broke there you go I've actually i literally yeah. have broke four or five yeah. in different ways i've had I, i've sheared pedals off i've sheared yeah, I've, I've bent i've bent the arms there on two you go. of them that's why i've been doing too big yeah so yeah. you go because it's like I'm, let's be honest most people using assault bikes can't bench press 470 pounds yes, it's just not happening yes, no. so when i get going and i'm not doing it i ain't doing no Five minute fucking yeah, test. Exactly. Yeah, it's so 15 seconds. Going, yeah, so like yeah. We, when we do the dirty 30, I'll do 30 cows in like 16 seconds and be done yeah. with that fucking thing. Yeah. I'll want to die 10 seconds later. That's another like, problem. But I get in it and it's just like, just get and this the faster over you go, with. the more it, yeah, 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 it goes like, so if you, if you can be powerful, that's how you do it. But yeah. I have just fucking, so I, I, what I did at my gym is I went, I went back to just using the uh, like Airdyne Airdynes, the yeah. Schwinn ones, because I could get those for nothing. Yeah. And if I fuck one up, it's not I a thousand throw bucks. it away. Yeah, exactly. It's not one. a thousand bucks, yeah. Because you can always fix an assault bike, but I don't want to be having something I spend a thousand bucks on. Every single time that broke, I would be just mad. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I couldn't bring it into my world. But <laughs> Look at him staring at me. Look at that fucking psychotic dog over there. What? <laughs> So we've got, uh, so, anyway. so, so we kind of covered the intensity bit. Right, but okay, so, but I want to bring one more point. Okay. Because some people will go um, and go back to why they don't push on the sled. Well, you know what? I don't need to go that hard. But if I go a little bit harder, just a little bit, that means I'm going to get the progress, right? Then you're oh. back in the Lego theory, where you think all it takes is to put blocks on top of each other. Then we're back to all you're going to, all you're doing, you are an agent of averageness. averageness. Yep. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> Joker, baby, Dark Knight. Right. So that's the difference. And you know what? You want to be in an, uh, an agent of averageness? Go. Yeah. But don't 
first of all is... But then nowhere, don't wonder why you're not excellent. <laughs> That's my... Know where you're going to be in life then. Yeah. And by all means, don't ask me how to be average. Yeah. Does, does, do I look like a guy who knows how to be average on anything <laughs> that I do? Like, do, what do you think? I drive people insane <laughs> because I'm always like, well, let's see how far we can push that one. Yeah. Uh, like, ask Kyla how she feels on a daily basis. That should be a podcast. What is it like to live with me? I'll talk to her. We'll have that one without you. Just the two of you? Yeah. What is it like to live with me? Like, trust me, average <laughs> is not a term I understand. Yeah. Right. So, but the key also is if you think you're going to put, it's, you know what that mentality is? It's like in the Black Swan event. It's that, um, let me explain to you how that works from a money perspective. You put your money into a secure bond. You get 3% a year. Yep. Whatever the CDs are like even less just than just enough to clear inflation or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So you clear inflation, let's say by 1%, which I don't even think it is. But let's say you clear by 1%. You're not for 10 years. Right. So you accumulate 1%. You're not at 10%. You're way more than that. Mm -hmm. But within the next 10 years, there'll be one recession, one crisis. Those two most likely will wipe you out by 20%, yep. which means best case scenario, you're even. Yeah. Except now, you're 10 years later. With so the same amount of money. So that means, really, you could have put it under your mattress and it wouldn't have made that big of a difference. Yeah. Right? That's what you're going to get out of life if you want to go with the Lego theory. Right? And so that's what I mean by a high salary job will make you less likely to be rich. Is that mentality of, I'm going to just try to get 1% on a regular basis. You think it makes you uh, prudent and well-organized. It doesn't. It just makes you average. This is not prudence. This is not being smart about your training. This is not, it's not true. It's just about being average. Yeah. Right. And well, because, because people, I think people hide behind that prudence yes. and being conservative with it because they're worried about the things that using low West movements will save you from somewhat. Meaning, it's, it's I don't want to push too hard because the last time I did, I got a little shoulder thing. I don't want to push too hard with this. It's like, okay, we've removed now all exactly. of this. Now the it's you. Is, it's you. And intensity and, and you. nothing it's else. You. I, I don't know anyone that, whose dream in life was to be average. Like, I don't, I don't know a kid under six who has ever said, you know what I want to be when I grow up? Average. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to look at me for what I am, is I'm a six-year-old, just in a 46-year-old body going like, I still want superpowers. Yeah. Like literally, I think my greatest quality is I'm eight. <laughs> Maybe it's an autism thing, <laughs> but I swear, because I'm like, I'm not done with the superpower shit. Yeah. I, and I'd say that dead serious. I still think I can get to it. <laughs> I, we'll find I, a way. I will, we are, well, I'm getting closer every single step. That's how greatness is found though. It's yeah. like, I don't know where it is. Because, by the way, I don't say I want Wolverine special powers. I just want superpowers. I don't give a shit which one it Whatever is. Whatever they are. But, so radioactive spiders, whatever we got to get you around. Professor we'll Xavier, when anybody there. I kind of like Professor Xavier. I, I like all of them. Anyway, that, but that's, that's a, how the universe works, though. Yeah. You don't ask for those superpowers. You just ask for superpowers. You don't ask to be great at this. You just ask to be great. And then the shape it takes, whatever. So you don't get to ask the universe for the shape of the gift, right? Yeah. You just put the energy out there, positive energy, and you, the universe will pay you back. You don't get to choose how the universe pays you back. So it's a very important thing because that idea of, I'm just going to do a little bit more than last week and just get this. And you know, like that fucking science of stress from the seventies, which we call periodization. Yeah. Right. Guess what? If you took to all the greats, they went like this and then went straight up. It wasn't periodization. That got them there. It was figuring figuring out what works for them. Yeah. And, and then it, the momentum becomes its Exactly. Own and guess what? What they found what worked for them was not what they were aiming for. Nothing has ever been discovered by design. Why do I mean by that? How long have human beings been looking for a boner pill? A long time. Five thousand, ten thousand years. Yeah. Trust me, yeah. men. <laughs> that means since it's been men on earth, they've been looking for how do I get this bigger? Yep. Uh, so we've been looking for Viagra. Rhino for horns, whatever it takes, man. But that's why we put the fucking... <laughs> did you see those? They, they wear those those things with like a fake bulge like and stuff like piece, that? Yeah. yeah I'm, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, so we've been looking for that shit for 10,000 years, right? Do you know how we find Viagra? It was, a, it was like a heart medication. Or exactly. Like yeah. Right. Welcome to life. Yeah. It's always like that. Nothing great has ever been achieved by design in that sense, yeah. which means everything was ever found 
by not by mistake, but by the, so a stepping stone that had nothing to do. Do you know what was required to make a computer work? Vacuum tubes. Right. Do you think the guy who created vacuum tube had in mind going idea. like, I'm going to, you know how the microwave fucking works? How we, not, no. no, because a microwave is actually the science of a uh, microwave, right? Is to do a magnetron, a radar. Mm -hmm. Right. So a radar, you need a magnetron. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was off, off of the radar thing. Right. It was like, it would get hot. Exactly. No, yeah. do, you know, do you know, we figured the shit. The guy had a chocolate bar in his pocket and, and it started melting. And they were like, huh? Right, so no one set up to create a microwave oven. That guy died from that, whatever that was. Oh, yeah, at some point, for sure. Yeah, different question. <laughs> like, you want to know if microwaves are bad? Look at the guy who yeah. created the oven. Um, but so everything in life has always been like that. Hi. Uh, this is how everything of value in life has been created. This is a black swan event that Taleb talks about. Yeah. It's always been like that. You don't get to choose the shape. It you don't know where that stepping stone is. That's not how you choose greatness. So that idea that you're just going to build like a little bit for a little bit, yeah, you're fooling yourself. Yeah. You, it's you. You just don't want to go there. And, and plus that fundamentally is against what intensity is. And I think, I think, I think, I think, I think intensity is a thing that you just have to jump in. Right. And that's why, that's why using some low west movements to find intensity I, I believe or to reveal yourself, or to re but I think it allows you to jump in head first yeah. and just get fucking lit on fire with very little right. consequence. Meaning yeah. you can just do the thing that you have to right. do. It's one of those things that you really can yep. just fucking go because I don't care how you do it if you do right. it fucking hard. Then and you know what intensity becomes? It becomes a measure of how you do yeah. instead of a target. Yeah. The problem is you guys are setting up what we say as a target. That for you can game the system. Yeah. Oh, I reached better intensity than last first. year. Yeah. I did my set. Yeah. That's a target. What we're talking about is a measure. Yeah. Is you go as hard as you fucking can, and the intensity I reach will be a measure of how hard you went. But it is not a target. Yeah. The target is go until the you get you know that blinding Till pain. It's off. Yes. Yeah. Till you shut off. Yes. Be an agent of chaos, not averageness. Yeah. Right. That's the key because you're confusing again measure and target, yeah. and that's what people do with a strong fit system. They, they take it as a target, where actually it's only a measure. So all the system that you see in strong fit, all the stuff we came up with, is a measure of, in, in that sense, my intelligence. But it was never a target. I didn't find them because I looked for them. I just kept training for the best result possible. And on the way there, I found certain things that work, and I, and I took them and I put them there. But this is not a target. I never went and said, I'm going to find the West. I just kept training and go like, I can't do this at my incendiary, but I can do that. And at some point I was like, hmm, why? So once I reached all that and I understood the system, did I put it in a system that worked for people? But I was never going to find it that, yeah. I, because I didn't know it existed. So how can you find something you don't know exists, yeah. right? And that's what the Lego theory is, is people saying like, if I just, I'll, I'll be able to know, because by definition, you cannot quantize what you don't know. Yeah. You know, I didn't know what I didn't know because I didn't know it yet. <laughs> right? That's that's Plato's cave. So what was on just only because I forgot is is we, so we covered the intensity side. What was right. the other side of that? It was that. Before? It was like how okay. to get the movement that beats the shit out of you, how to make it work. Yeah. Lower the waist. Lower. Because most of the problem uh, when people say I have a problem with squatting, that's not true. They don't have a squat problem, they have a barbell problem. Yeah. So if I can remove the barbell or the skill or the so you can still yeah. use barbell but on their sun squat or whatever. If I can lower the waist, I can make that exercise work for you. Yeah. For example, a way to lower the waist is easy. Less weight on the bar. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there's less weight bearing on your spine. Yeah. So in that case, you could squat with less weight. Work on the skill. Uh, work on the skill, right? Yeah. Intensity goes down. Mm -hmm. So are you still getting? And the purpose so, of West isn't the, of this scale isn't just to find purely intensity too. So just in this case, other it's, ways, like, it's yeah. like there you go. So you can lower that in a way to make sure that so your training isn't you compromised work on the skill? by your skill. Right. How do you exactly? So how do you work on the skill? You lower the weight bearing, yeah. right? Or the eccentric, and then you can work on the skill. And so that would allow you, but then the point of that would be to work on the barbell back squat. Mm -hmm. So the squat wouldn't be a measure of how big your legs are gonna be or measure of how strong you're gonna be. It would be just getting better at the barbell back squat. Let's say you wanna compete. Yeah. All right, so you're gonna have to work on the fucking skill on the barbell, that's one thing. But if you don't compete, then why are you lowering the weight bearing to get better at barbell back squat? I don't mind you doing it. Yeah. It's just know so that you that's know why what, you're well, doing and it. Know what exactly. It is exactly. Do you yeah. know that's what you're doing? Yeah. You're getting better at the barbell. That doesn't make you necessarily stronger overall. It just makes you stronger with a barbell on the back squat. It doesn't necessarily give you bigger legs. It doesn't. You know what I mean, so mm -hmm. if you're a bodybuilder, for example, 
then if you get bigger legs with a sandbag than with a barbell, you by all means, sandbag, fucking yeah. use a sandbag. Yeah. Remember, measure and target. They are not the same. Yeah. They are not the same. How so, big your legs are is a measure of how much stress you put on your legs. What do we want to send anybody home with with this? Uh, so apply the West to both, to finding intensity once a week intensity and not... And I, and I like intensity and isolation is the way I like to look at it. As in like it is intensity on its own. Right. In a but vacuum, not almost. through the Lego principle. Yeah. Don't... What, what I want them to go home is to understand is that don't, don't game this. Like understand that it's you. You're not doing it in order to find this or because you're conservative about this because you're smarter than me. You're just pushing, pushing out mm -hmm. of it. Like a lot of time, it's not... It's not about finding this, it's, it's you. It's like you well, need to find intensity to find you. And Rich, Richard has said this before too. It is, he always says, he's like, I wanted to see if I could actually die behind the sled. Yeah. If I could, where it's just me. If I can literally go so hard that everything stops. And we haven't had anybody find that yet. No. So you'll probably be okay. No, no, no. There's too many defense. <laughs> but you can get really close. But the point is, well, why, why would I need to do that? Because you need to know about yourself, by the yeah. way. Know right. where your quit is. You, you, know? you, because you don't want to be an agent of averageness. That's why yeah. you need to go find it. So I understand that there are, and I, one day I'll explain all the reasons why you're coming up with so many excuses. But this comes down to the question, do you want to be an agent of averageness? And if the answer is yes, then don't fucking follow me. Yeah. Because I'm the last person on earth who will help you do that. I am not good at this. I am not good at being average. Yeah. So, so work on that for intensity. See? And then the other part is whatever movement is bidding you to shit that does not let you train the way you want to train, look at the waist, lower the waist. You have three ways, weight bearing, uh, eccentric skill, combination of two, combination of three, or just, yeah. just one of them, whatever. But Find that, ways to build upon right, that. That requires it. that you know what is it, you, which part you're lowering and for what. Yeah. And it also requires you to understand the difference between a measure and a target. Yeah. So again, it's not about the system that that we give you. So it's not about the West. It's about understanding from them, that fucking dog. <laughs> what do you get scared of? Um, Literally nothing. Uh, li himself. <laughs> like it's, I've never seen someone getting scared of himself. Like, anyway, the other day he farted and it scared the shit out of him. He was there farted and, he, <laughs> and so you hear the claws on the, on the, on the hardwood floor. He scared the shit out of him farting. Anyway, um, so th the key is of the West is, is to give you an idea of understanding the fundamental concept of Measure versus target. When yeah. a measure becomes a target, it seems to be a good measure. It's about uh, it's about ideas like that. What is it you're doing that movement for? Right. So it's measure versus Plus, target. And I, and I think if you look at some of the movements that you are doing, you will see like look at some of the movements that would register very high on that scale. Right. right. Look exactly. at what you're doing yeah. with them and be like, okay, understand well, how is this? What is this costing me? Is it okay? It might be. Yeah. But what is but, it costing you? But and what maybe can you do? That, that's answer, the way I Answer the want. question. Yeah, yeah. Answer the question. And by the way, why are you doing that particular movement? What is the point? Again, measure versus target. Right? But it's up to you to decide. So it's not up to us, but you have to apply the principle to you to figure out. And it will allow you to, to look and go like, what is it that I'm trying to get exactly? Because and am if, I, is that the best way to get there? Yeah, because if you just go into your clients on tomorrow and you say... Okay, well, I heard this thing, so we do yes. sleds now for intensity, and, the, and it's like, well, no, you don't get it now, and now you're gonna yeah. people are gonna pull up short. It's not the sled. It's not. It remember, really is the concept. You cannot you need to find greatness on the way you think will get you there. Like yeah. by definition, remember that a high paying job will make you less likely to become rich. Yeah. That's the idea. So, uh, the, you are less likely to find greatness if you set it as an objective. Great, greatness comes as a byproduct of the work that you put in. But if you set it as an objective, most likely you'll fail. Yeah. That, so that's why don't look at our system like, oh, I'm just going to use that and I'll be strong fit. No, strong fit is a way to learn things, is, is a set of principles that you need to understand, that, you, that needs to be part of you so that you can do what we do your way. Yeah. You can't be me, but you can be you. And you know what? You can be you a lot better than I can. So how about you do that? Because you can't be me. The place is taken. And I'm a fucking freak anyway. You don't want that. <laughs> but um, you know what? The best person you can be is you. Yeah. And you can do that better than anybody else. So don't follow what we do like this. You take the fundamental principles and you apply them to you. Yeah. And then you'll be the best version of you. And that's how you achieve greatness. But you cannot set it as a target. I know it's... Do you know when they said you find destiny on the way you took to avoid it? 
It's it's one of those principles of life, man. I know it's annoying. So you know, it's the game that Richard talks about. To win yeah. the game, you can never think about the game. <laughs> but now you think about the game is you lost the game. Yeah. It's literally that. Like you can only find greatness if you never set it as an objective. It's Bayesian inference. Like it's the structure of the universe. I can, all the way to quantum mechanics. I can I can take that basically from a human concept to quantum mechanics. It is the foundation of the universe. So that's perfect for us to wrap on, I think. There you go. Nailed it. I'm the man. <laughs> there's, mo there's moments that are in the end where I know we're getting ready to wrap up. Yeah. And Julian just gets I on. I just kill the conversation. No, 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 no. He just yeah. gets in such a role where I'm like, Jesus, this looks like some Gary Vee shit right now. I yeah, just keep yeah, this yeah. rolling. And it's and like, like but, but then I'm like, okay, well, we do have to stop at some point. There's anyway, limits to the cameras. Point, yeah. I do, by the way, I, I'm the best at killing seminar. I go into those runs and after, like, poof. All right, so we take a break now. Um, <laughs> So uh, anyways, go to strongfit.com, strongfitequipment.com, or .eu. That's the apparel, sandbags, all the good stuff. Uh, juliansCorner.com is going to be for all things Julian. Strongfit Community Group on Facebook. Strongfit Book Club on Facebook. Uh, new book recommendations. We'll also start putting through some links and stuff to where you can directly get to those. And that way people can get them yep. where we see them instead of just having to find it on their own. We also have, uh, what else we got? There'll be a podcast support page out there. Keep an eye out on it. We'll link to that in the stuff below. Uh, yeah, it's so many books. Right Christ, that's too. probably everything. I don't know, probably. Yeah, Maybe whatever. Mantha Fitness in Australia. I don't think they listen anymore. They shut off the podcast. You know, that's the, there is a no bit one of a, looks there is a bit of a philosophy in podcasting. You got to do your advertising in the middle or in the beginning. Because it, no, one, it's that, like, no one is listening to this. Our podcast does not work that way. I'm not going to stop in 45 Something. minutes ago and be like, and be Julian, like, stop. Brought yeah. to you by Blue Chew Boner yeah. Pills. Yeah, you know? exactly. like, <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, no yeah, one is listening to As soon as you say Viagra, it's yeah. like, I could have, I could have, yeah, I could segue commercials probably better than I could segue getting you in and out of conversation. Yeah, there you go. But my point is, no one is listening to us right yeah, now. Yeah, if you are, uh, bless, bless your heart. you. Because <laughs> you want to listen to us till the end. Yeah. We have, you know what we have to do is we have to make funny stuff, but at the end of this, just so that way, just or you know, the people that truly love us will be able to get. I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to start sneaking in like my favorite really obnoxious death metal songs, like an entire song, like starting five minutes after this point, so, where if your earbuds are still in, yeah, it'll you know, just like, rip just your the, fucking because eardrums Because for the people open. that truly love us, then they get an extra. Oh, <laughs> totally. All right, so you made it this far. We'll probably see you next week. I love then. you. <laughs> Bye.